G'day everyone, welcome back to Fix It and Post. Today we are going to learn how to do this clock animation because I know that every day you spend a lot of time looking at the screen and you want to animate something that kind of represents your life just ticking away one second at a time. Inevitably going to that point of, you know, to the afterlife. But we're not here to talk about that today. We're here to learn how to animate a clock in After Effects. It's very simple. We're going to set up a couple of little features in here as well. In this, we're going to have a control for the hour, so what hour you wanted to start. So you don't have to start it at one hour. We can make it start at three hour, at hour three, maybe at 20 past, uh, you know, when the school bell rings at the end of the day. Uh, we've got a couple little shadows in here that we're using with Shadow Studio, which is a plugin that you'll have to pay for, but it's fine. It works completely without it as well. This just makes it look a lot nicer. And I'll just show you how to design this clock from the get go without all the fancy bells and whistles for now. So we're going to make a new comp, go clock, 1920 by 1080, 25 frames a second or whatever you like. And we'll make it go for one minute and square pixels and we'll go OK. So we're going to double click on the comp, layer, new solid, and we'll just make it a light blue background. We're going to go up here to the shape tool, which is the circle ellipse tool. And we're just going to pick a color. So let's make this like a nice kind of tealy blue, dark blue. And we'll also make a border. So we'll pick the border color. We'll make it a nice white. And let's hold down shift and we'll drag this all the way out so that we just get this nice big circle. Now I'm going to go up here to the pan behind tool and I'm going to hold down command or control and double click on the pan behind. That's going to automatically make the pivot position of this object right dead center. And then once you've done that, let's go to align and let's find the align tool, which is not here. So we'll go align. Uh, which is window and then go down to a line and then we're just going to click this middle one here and then this middle one here and that's going to make it dead center and just so we can see where the crosshairs are in this space we're just going to click title action safe you can see right here dead center right in the middle and that's very nice all right let's duplicate this and we're going to press edit and then go to duplicate and we're just going to because we already know this is dead center so we'll press we'll go back to the arrow to the properties and we'll just click on this and we'll make the oops we'll click on stroke sorry should i say the word stroke and we'll click nothing make that zero and then we're also going to just bring this down so it's a slightly darker color and then we're just going to twirl down to these properties here and we'll go down to lips tool and go to lips path and we're just going to make this a little bit smaller and that'll be our little cap on top of our uh, what do you call of our dial? So we'll call this dial cap. Just I'm just pressing enter, and we'll call this clock face. All right. Now let's go right in the middle here. We well, actually might change this to a slightly different color. Let's make this a magenta. You can make whatever color you want, but I'm just going to pick my favorite colors: the magenta and blue here. So I guess people can call that pink as well. Now we're just going to hold down and click anywhere that's not so nothing else is highlighted. And now we're going to pick the pen tool where you press G and we're going to find the dead center of this and we're just going to click as close as we can to the center here. And then right now we're going to go and make our first hand, which is the minute hand. So right now you can't see anything, but if we click on this and go make that null and we click on stroke and make that fill, we're going to change the color of this to this. And that's looking pretty good. Now I don't like the end caps of that. So we're going to go down to the contents here and we're going to go stroke and we're going to change this to round cap. And so there you go. That looks a little bit nicer. Now we're going to rename this one minute and then we're going to duplicate this. You can press command D or control D. We can come down here and press duplicate and we're going to rename this one hour. Now we're going to turn this one off just for a second, just so we can see what we're doing. And we're going to make this one a little bit shorter because traditionally the hour hand is a little bit shorter. So we'll just make this come down around here. And so as you can see, we've got our minute hand and our hour hand. Now, if you've done this correctly, they should all pivot from the center here like this. And that's why you want to start right dead center. So the pivot point is set up correctly. We're going to bring these both behind the dial cap as well. Let's turn these off for a second. Let's turn all these little bits here. Uh, off and let's set up the numbers as well. So with the clock face, we're up to the trickiest part of this tutorial and that is trying to make the increments on the, the face of the dial. So what we're going to do here is we're going to zoom straight in and we're going to find the dead center of this. And what we're going to do is you got to follow these steps of the letter. Otherwise this may not work for you. So we're going to find dead center, click as close as you can to the center here and maybe just about here as well. And we've got our little stroke here, which is fantastic. 
And now what we're going to do is we we'll want to drag this up to the top here, but without affecting the anchor point. And so see right here as I'm dragging it up, the anchor point is coming with me and I don't want that. I just want to move the path itself, not the shape, uh, not the object itself. So right now to combat this and just to move the shape, and I know that sounds very confusing, but here's what we're going to do. We're going to twirl down, go to the shape, go to contents, go to shape, go to path, and then highlight the path. As you can see here, two little boxes come up. And so we're going to hold down shift on one. We're just going to click on one, hold down shift, and then click on the other. And what we're going to do is we're going to drag this all the way up and like so, and it becomes like that. And then we're going to go stroke and go round cap. Now, the reason you'll know this is done right is that we're going to add another function here called the repeater. And as you can see, nothing happens, but what we're going to do is we're going to change a couple of the parameters in the repeater property. So we're going to change the number of copies to 12. I've done this before, so use with the trust me. Now we're going to go down the transform properties and we're going to change the position, the first coordinate position to zero. And we're going to change the rotation to 30. Right now, that is what it should look like. Now, if it isn't done correct, you will see that it will create some weird patterns that go off to the side that will be incorrect. You may even see things like, you know, stuff like this happening or like this happening if you haven't done it correctly. So it's important you follow, go back, rewatch the video and see if you can figure out where you went wrong. But follow the steps and you will get this, no problems. All right, so we'll call this dial face or something, I don't know. We'll bring this down and then let's turn these back on again. All right, cool. Now that we've got all that, when it comes to animating the hands itself, you could go through and just like, you know, set your own keyframes. We could just set one keyframe here and then go ahead and set another keyframe and that's all good and dandy. But um, like I said, we kind of want to set our own relationships up so that no matter what you do, the minute hand, the hour hand will follow accordingly. Of course, if that's not what you want to do, that's completely fine as well. But I'm going to set up some relationships because I'm very lazy. So what I'm going to do is we're just going to alt click or we're going to bring up the rotation properties of both of them. So press R and both, highlight both and press R. I'm going to press alt or command click and then we're going to drag this to the rotation. So right now that's just going to follow exactly the rotation of that is. That's, exact, that's going to follow the rotation of exactly what the minute is. But we're actually going to divide it by 12 because there are 12 increments in 360. So we're going to divide it by 12. So what happens is that when this does become, for example, when we go for a full rotation, this will go to one o'clock and that is looking not too bad at all. So there we go. Pretty easy. I don't want to drive this with keyframes. I would rather drive this with expressions. So let's bring out the rotation for this and we're going to set some parameters as well. So let's alt click on this and we'll put type time and then we'll see how this goes. And so right now, it's actually just mimicking real time. Um, right now, it's actually going per second, which is kind of slow. So we can actually increase this by a factor of 100. And so that's not looking too bad at all. And that's pretty much as easy as it is to basically set up that expression to run a clock. And you can increase this factor by as much as you want. And this can just go for as long as you like forever and ever, and it doesn't matter what you do, this will go on forever. Now, if you want to set a particular time, say a starting time, this is where it gets a bit more advanced. So if you want to click out, that's completely fine with me. But for those who are still sticking around, I'm going to show you some funky stuff as well. So we're going to set up a new object here, a new null object, and we're going to add a couple of things. Uh, this is using an FX console, where you can just drag a slider control on if you want. So I'm just looking for a slider control. You should absolutely in install FX console. It is bloody brilliant. All right, we're going to call this one hour. We're going to duplicate this, Command D or Control D. We're going to call this one minute. And then we're going to do it one more time. We're going to call this factor. Uh, this will be the speed factor. And this will all become very, very obvious in one second. So let's go to E. Let's press E on this one. And we've got all the effects we've got here. We've dialed down so we can actually see all the bits and pieces that we need. I'm going to bring this up just a touch. Just so we can see what we're doing. Now we're going to bring the hour up. And so we're going to create some new properties here. So let's say we'll call this hour oh, HR. HR. <laughs> yeah, anyway. <laughs> I love those guys. Not really. I don't really like HR people. All right, HR. And we'll call this. And that's what that is. And then what we'll do is we'll add this onto whatever this is. 
So we're just gonna, wherever we wanna set the hour, we're gonna set it as, you know, whatever that is. And so we'll just go, uh, say plus hour. Now that will cause some issues because that's not quite right. But what we're gonna do is we're going to just, we have to increase this by a factor of 30. So we're gonna times it by 30 so that when it does actually start, um, say if we go, we want to start at three o'clock, it will go to three. Otherwise, if we don't have that, um, if we don't have that in there, it doesn't, it just increments by three degrees and that's not what we want, but we have to increase by number 30. And then we can finally actually get it to uh, increase in the increments that we want. So if we say we want to start at three o'clock at the third hour or the fourth hour, for example. Oh, that's not quite right either. Oh no, that's right. It starts at four o'clock. All right. Likewise with this one, we're going to set up a parameter. So let's go uh, minute, min. I know min, there's already a function called min, but we're going to call this and we'll define our own parameters. So this is the minute slider and then that's fine. And we're actually going to increase this by, you know, that's fine. And then we're going to go, this value is just going to be time. And then we're going to make a new, we're going to make a new one called factor. And we're going to call this, and we're going to slide it to this one as well. And so what we can do is we can plug in these values, factor, uh, and then plus min. And that's just basically going to give us, so if we want to start at 20 minutes, we can. Um, but obviously this is going to not quite work because that's not 20 minutes, is it? Uh, 20 minutes is actually somewhere around here. So what we're going to do is we need to increase this by a factor of six. Oops, not that one, wrong one. Uh, we're going to increase the minimum factor by, the minute factor by six, and that'll correct that issue. And then the factor, uh, we've got to, is going very slow. It is actually moving very slowly, but it's not moving very fast at all. So let's make it 100. And that should fix that issue. And now we can finally see that is actually moving the way that it's supposed to move, which is kind of good. All right, and as you can see here, even if you start at the fourth hour, it's actually in the correct time spot, which is what you want. So, you know, like it's kind of cool that the relationships are all kind of set up that way and you can start the time wherever you like. And that's kind of a fun way to kind of animate this if you want to actually make a kind of realistic clock. And you can even export this as an essential graphics thing and actually get it to work inside Premiere as well. Now for the last part, if you want to see how I did all the Shadow Studio stuff, it's very straightforward. Um, I just added Shadow Studio, so I'm going to use FX Console one more time, Shadow Studio, and then I'm just going to pick whip this color. I'm just going to make this. It's a very, it's a very cool plugin. Like it's super easy to use. Um, the clock face I'm going to duplicate here, bring it to the top, and I'm going to make this a no fill. Just I just want the stroke color as well. Um, and I'm just going to leave that as that is. I'm going to actually parent this to the clock face so it cuts out some of the mat as well. Uh, we'll put the clock back in. And likewise, I'm going to put Shadow Studio on the minute and uh, on this as well. So let's make this a slightly darker color. And I'm going to copy this and put it on the hour. And that's basically all that is. And to put the sheen on, I just created a white solid, a uh, white shape, and then I'm holding down Alt or Option to click through those options in case you're wondering how I did that. And I'm just gonna create a sort of trapezium type shape over the top of this. And let's bring this on top of, underneath the clock face. Actually, let's bring it on top. Oh, no, on, yeah, on top, on top. And then I'm gonna parent the, I'm gonna use the mat of the clock face again so that it actually takes the parent of that out. And um, I'm going to just quickly, actually I wanna, it's actually take, it's inheriting the shadow, which is a bit of a problem. So I might have to actually duplicate this, take off this shadow studio and then use this again. So it's just a clean clock face. There we go, that's not too bad. Now I'm just gonna add a little bit of a curve here like this. And we're gonna dial down the opacity just a touch. So that's nice like that. Now you can probably leave it like that, but I'm gonna put a little bit extra. I'm gonna to go to the mask tool and the ellipse tool. And I'm gonna click on this so we create a mask on our shape. And then we're gonna go like this. And then I'm gonna press F to bring out the feather. 
And that's it. That is basically creating our clock in a nutshell with controls uh, that you can totally change whatever you like. And right now I'll tell you what time it is. It is 2, 2 10 in the afternoon here in Australia. And uh, that is as easy as it is to create that clock face without any issues. And if you're curious about how Breaking Bad would look if it was an anime, check out this link here and how I made a Breaking Bad opener in under 300 hours.